Hey everybody, welcome here to Reboot Leggers. This is a comedy podcast where we illegally produce underground reboots here in our internet speakeasy, also called Reboot Leggers, I think. I'm Scott Owen. I'm Frank Sarah. Frank, Daylight Saving has messed me up. The week after? Yeah, we're a whole week after. On Friday, uh, the day never felt like it past 11.30. It was like 4.45, and I thought it was still 11.30. Mm-hmm. I just I just played it safe, and I just slept for a solid 48 hours. <laughs> just at the on the day? Like, so you took that whole weekend, or you waited yeah, until just, you slept out. Monday, just, Tuesday? Just in case. <laughs> just in case. Just in case what, though? What do you... What do you just... Remember? It was only a precaution. <laughs> what do you... What do you? It was just I. What are you taking just precautions to, it's just against? To, it's, just better, it's, just, it's just better to be sure. <laughs> well, speaking of saving, I want to throw I want to throw some words at you. Mm-hmm. Money, property. I, I receive I receive the word property. Check. Railroads. Are we talking about the board game monopoly, Scott? And hotels. I'm talking about monopoly. The board game. Now it sounded like you were about to start a rap. Did I interrupt a rap? If I say no, that's disappointing. But if I say yes, I think it'll also be disappointing. Because If you say yes, I'm going to ask for the rap. And if you don't have one, it's just going to be embarrassing for us. Right. And if I attempt one, it will also be disappointing. So I'm going to say... So no, I, didn't, I did maybe. not interrupt a rap in progress. Maybe you did. We'll never know. It's too late now. It's too late to tell. Now... So we've got Parker Hasbro's... Yeah, we're Parker, talking about... Parker Brother is owned by Hasbro right now. Yeah, Terry the Intern has provided us with this week's reboot subject, and it is the board game Monopoly, owned by Hasbro, who owns Parker Brothers, originally published by Waddington's, which is a very good name. Waddington's is good, and we're going to have something named Waddington in the film. You gotta, because it sounds like wads of money. Oh, wads of money. All right. Yeah, we're going to use Waddington. We're going to use Waddington. Everybody understands Monopoly. It's a game that everyone thinks that they like until they play it, and then they remember, oh, no, I hate this game. Mm -hmm. This game is not actually fun. For some reason, everyone owns, like, four different copies of it, each themed differently. I, myself, own, like, five. Monopoly, the game that you play months or years apart. Yes. (laughs) Four sessions. Yes. I have Transformers Monopoly. Spider-Man Monopoly, Marvel Monopoly, I think I might have a Star Wars Monopoly. Oh, there's so many Star Wars Monopolies. Growing up, we had original Star Wars Monopolies, and that one was cool because the houses and hotels were X-Wings, TIE Fighters, Millennium Falcons, and Star Destroyers. And oh. you could get every, if you if you had a thousand or maybe ten thousand dollars, you could uh, trade it in for a metal coin with like empire money on it and writing is the, on it. Is the metal coin just a $10,000 bill or I think, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. It doesn't like do anything in the game. No, but it felt really cool because they're only, yeah. Like I mean, you're holding them. a big metal object. Yeah. And then of course the tokens are very cool. You've got your Chewbacca. Like if your... I could carry Frisbees that were worth 10 grand, Ooh. I would immediately go to my bank and get out as much money as I could. And you might be able to, I mean, let's be real. I if... haven't checked. Things are only worth as much as you're willing to pay for them. So if you just went and paid ten grand for a frisbee, that's that's a ten that's a ten grand frisbee. Yeah, but no one else would know know that. True. You'd need to make it hard. Nope. Make it gold and heavy. But so yeah, everybody knows Monopoly. You roll two six sided dice. You go around the board. Mm-hmm. You collect two hundred dollars when you pass go. And there's community chest. And what's the other one? Chance. Chance time and when you land no, chance time is from mario party um <laughs> and i you, think it's just chance yeah and you go around you land on properties you can choose to buy them or not buy them if someone else owns the property you pay rent and the goal is to try to bankrupt everyone else mm-hmm. um and uh pretty straightforward in, in uh, heinously uh terrible to play yeah you can go to bad, jail bad to do you can go to jail and if you go to jail you do not um collect rent you don't pass go and you don't pass go and no free parking most importantly so we've got well we 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 have the game but now we need to make the adventure yeah so let's get into we're gonna just dive right in we'll hop into our first segment called love it or leave it and this is where we talk about what we like and what we don't like 
but we're going to keep what we're going to get rid of. Here's what I want to get rid of. Basically the whole game. Yeah, I I want I want we're ma- I mean, this is an interesting situation because we're going to make a movie and movies are not games. No, but here's what I want to keep. I want to keep very few things. Jail. I want to keep jail. The concept of prison is probably pretty important to a society. Yeah, I do want to keep the tokens. I want the tokens to be involved somehow. And we're going mm-hmm. classic tokens. I don't want any of this T-Rex bullshit. Yeah, we're we're going we're hardliners. Hardliners for, for some reason. Now, we we care about this. How original are we talking here? I'm me? talking original. 1937 original because yeah, we're talking battleship. battleship. We're talking rocking horse. We're talking cannon, old-timey cannon. Cannon boot. Uh thimble. race car thimble. Top hat. Wheelbarrow. Although wheelbarrow was 1942, are we allowed to scrap the wheelbarrow? No original wheelbarrow. 1937 monopoly pieces only. Okay. Um I'm confused Purse. that race car is there because that must mean something different in 1937. It was an old-timey race car. You know those ones that just look like tubes with wheels? Okay. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. I'm going to yeah. send you an image just so you know what I'm talking about. Just so that I know that you know. Like, I need you... I can't move forward until I know that you can picture this tube with wheels. Yeah, I mean, it's like it's like the um, the Oscar Mayer Wiener Mobile, right? It's exactly right. It's incredibly sleek, and I'm kind of surprised we've moved away from that. Oh, uh, okay. It's basically the real life man sized version of like a Pinewood Derby car. Exactly right. <laughs> That's exactly right. Um, so yeah, we're keeping those tokens. We we'll get we're into maybe what jail. the tokens may be used for, but yeah. we're going to keep like. Not not strictly rent in the sense that in the real world you pay rent to live in a place. There will be property, But rent though. in the monopoly sense that you just com- constantly suck the money out of everyone else around you. Yes. Um, I do. There will be free parking, I think. There will be free Everybody parking. loves free parking. Yeah, I mean, I want to get rid of the... Well, here's also what I want to keep, actually. I want to keep the hopelessness and despair that you feel when you play this game. Because mm-hmm. I, I'm thinking... The fact that you can never dig yourself out of the hole that you're in, yes. and then you're just bankrupt. Yes, I want to take that concept, and um, I'm thinking this movie is a dystopia. Mm-hmm. Everyone, when playing Monopoly, everyone but the winner, at some point, looks at the board and then looks at their possessions, and they realize, I've already lost, but I still have to play for two more hours. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and there it makes friends of enemies. It Wait, no. It makes, it makes enemies, enemies of friends. Of friends. <laughs> and it makes worse enemies of existing enemies. It is not a game to be played with people you enjoy. And mm-hmm. um, we won't stand for it. Now, this does not include the very good card, da- card game Monopoly Go, I think it's called. And it is a streamlined version of this game, and it's actually very good. But we won't, we won't talk about that. But we're not here to show for Hasbro. I'm not here to shill for Hasbro, but there are so, some really good new Transformers toys out that you should check the out. Co- so the, the concept of hatred is probably going to stay. Hell that's, yeah. that's a that's a game piece. That's a game. <laughs> hatred's a game. The piece. final game piece which, is hatred. Which token embodies hatred, Frank? Yeah. Which which one of the original 1937 tokens do you think best um, encapsulates the, the concept? The boot. Oh yeah, the boot mm, for it's sure. Just <laughs> crushing you. Just getting the boot. <sighs> Now, I was going to say the iron. Oh, it could have been the iron because he's flattening you. He's flattening you. Replaced in 2013 by the cat by the fucking millennials. Nothing is sacred anymore. Nothing is sacred. Why can't we just keep the original 1937 Monopoly pieces? What was wrong with them? We replaced the thimble with a rubber duck. So, we're throwing out the square board game full of tiles. Yes, and we're bringing in... Well, let's. Sh- a, I think world, we're. I, I think this is actually a pretty easy short. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's it. a pretty short segment. Yeah, we're gonna move into our next segment called "Where and When." when? Ooh, nope, it's called "When and Where." Doesn't matter. This is the part of the show where we establish our setting, the rules of our world, what the genre is. I've already touched on genre, but we're gonna really get into it now. Frank, you were about to talk about a piece of this. I was. Yeah. Yes, I was. So, in the world of, is there, are we gonna are we gonna name the planet like Monopoly or Earth? It's. Mm, I don't think it should be called Monopoly. Yeah, because that would be weird. 
So we're on Earth, right? And we're going, um, we're going like dystopia noir kind of feel with this, I think. Mm -hmm. Here's the tricky part. We can't skew too close to the Clue movie. Oh, yeah. No. Well, what are you worried about there? I'm worried that if anyone is murdered and then there's any kind of question or mystery, we're just going to be making the Clue movie. I see. Yeah, we'll, we won't be doing that, but we will. There is. So in this world, it is a dystopian society. That, like an, an ultra capitalist. Uh, yeah. Haven. Now. Everything is owned by someone and nothing is public except for free parking. Yeah. The free parking accords of 2047 made it so that you can own your vehicle, but wherever you park your vehicle is free parking, as long as it's not on land owned by someone. So this is a world where everybody owns everything. Everybody owns Everybody everything. owns something, and every, some, everything, something is owned by everything. Everybody, everybody owns something. Everybody owns something. And something is owned by everything. Something is owned by every, everything. Does that mean... Everything? That makes it sound... Everyone like owns... Everything is owned by someone. Everything has an owner, unless it is a parking space. Unless it's a parking space. Um, but some parking spaces probably are owned. If it's their... Yes, if it's their property. Yes. Now, I want to keep this concept of... You can pass through property for free, but if you if you stop if you there. stop on property, you have to pay to be there. So there's kind of a there's kind of there's some kind of technology in which like live taxation is being checked constantly. Yeah. Right? Yeah. When you are born So you want to get a hot dog and you're on the you're on the hot dog company's private road to the hot dog restaurant, which is that's not taxable because they're a business. They want you to come to the restaurant. And so yeah, yeah. They, they, they have 0% taxes on the private road to the hot dog company. Mm -hmm. So then you're at the hot dog company and you buy your hot dog and you, you go to back down the road that the hot dog company owns and isn't taxing you for. And then you, you're, um, you, take a, you, you, you take a bite of that wiener and then you <laughs> accidentally drop your bag of chips and the wind blows it onto the lawn next door. So then you go to the lawn next door and you bend down to get your bag of chips and then your smartwatch goes crazy because you're not on someone's private property and you just got charged $10,000 for stopping. Yeah, we've got – how granular – let's let's define this. How granular are the properties? Are we talking like everybody – like each, each square foot is accounted for or are we talking like city blocks – buildings like how I, th I i i think yeah i don't want i don't want individual square feet because that's that seems a little much mm -hmm. i think it is it's lots right mm -hmm. of like you know acres half acre or whatever yeah you know there uh, we can choose the devices but i'm gonna make this up right now there's like a watch and then there's like glasses you can wear that like it that like augmented reality when the property lines are start or stop and start and stuff like that. Ooh, I like the. Augmented so you can be reality. like, whoa, yeah. that guy will tax me a billion dollars, so I'm going to go around. I like that. Um, I like. Yeah, I think it's so in Monopoly. You start out with like what two thousand dollars or something, something like that. Yeah. So in this world, when you are born, you are given a social you get data chipped. You get data chipped. And you, so you get a social security number, and then you also get a checking and savings account immediately attached to your data chip. $2,000 gets deposited, and then that number is displayed in a hologram just, like, floating above your chest. Yeah, well, know. for the augmented reality glasses when you're wearing them. Yeah. Yeah. You can also check your balance on your watch. Yeah, and so anytime you stop at a property or someone stops on your property, money changes hands. Yeah. Now, like much like the terrible life sucking game of Monopoly, one bad roll, one unfortunate stop can ruin you. Absolutely destroy you. Someone may, you know, cover that whole corner of the board and you are just, you know, if you roll a five through nine, you're boned in the dome. So you, yeah, and I guess we need to define a, a, a finable stoppage, right? Which is like. I think it's like one second of non-movement. Yeah, I think if it's if it's one full second of non-movement. And so I think that we, this is a society where everybody is so incredibly uber conscious of how much money they have at all times and also where they are terrifying. going. It's terrifying. And so I think that this is a society where they would, they would start to try to um, create quick 
travel minimizing friction as much as possible. You want to be able, like you want mm-hmm. to only stop when you choose to. You don't want any accidental stoppage. Yeah. So if you like trip and fall, there's like you want to make sure you keep sliding along so that you that, don't actually that trip and fall into someone's you're, spot. You're ready. You're ready to go to college. You've got all the money and you you and you write out the tuition check and you go to deliver it to the college personally because you for some reason you have to do that. Mm-hmm. And you're just and you're just humming along on your razor scooter. And you hit a bad rock, right? Mm-hmm. You you didn't anticipate this rock. Mm-hmm. You get pitched off of the road onto someone's lawn. Boom. They immediately take 50000 of your dollars. Not only did you not even have that much, people are now inbound to the house that you used to own to re- take everything they can yep. until you have nothing left. Yes. And now you are a man with absolutely nothing to your name but that Razor scooter. Oh, they took that too. Yep. So now much- you're just laying on the lawn with the shirt on your back. Yeah, this is an important um, point that you brought up. If you don't have the money then much like regular Monopoly, they get to start taking your possessions. And so in this dystopia, not only is every person instantly kind of cataloged financially, but literally like every single item is, is cataloged and registered to a person. And so if you don't have the money that you owe, that just, the system just starts like going through your possessions. I think maybe it goes from, you think it goes from most to least or least to most, most valuable? Most to, uh, most to least. You think you like, lose your house first? You lose your house if you owe an amount that is equal to or greater than yeah. your house. Okay, so yeah, you just start yeah. losing possessions, just start getting unregistered to you and registered to the yeah. the, the, the the person who you owe until the yeah. balance evens out. So Your watch goes off and it tells you, don't bother coming home, other people live there now. Yes, um, it, down to like the individual lego pieces in your children's toys like yeah. each piece is 12 cents it's like you get two red two by twos that's what's left after we take everything the software on your computer is cataloged separate from your from your computer you can't even open solid you can't even open calculate there goes your photoshop license now the other guy owns it and he also has all the photos that you ever made because it's under the license. That's how, it's how that Oh, works. taking photos. Yeah, well, so how about this? We get a little bit of political commentary on it, Frank. If you, you know I love getting political. You take the photos. In, um, if you don't post the photos anywhere, they only count as part of the device that they're stored on. But mm-hmm. if you put the photos up on some sort of social media... Then those are no lo- those get the photos can get snatched up individually. Yeah. yeah. So everything is about net worth, and I think that and uh, no and less society friction. has you know society is aware of this, right? Yeah. And so you'll you'll have like you'll you want to get some frozen yogurt. You locate your closest TCBY, and you definitely don't stop yet. As you're cruising by it to see if it's too crowded or not, you hold your hand out. There's a sign on the TCBY window, and it says. Don't even bother if you're not 20 grand. So or more. now the way I think the way it works is so I'm envisioning a world in which the ground is like super, super frictionless. Like it's this really smooth metal stuff. Either mm-hmm. everybody's got like frictionless. Sh- everybody like, roller skates. Everybody's like roller skating around. Everybody on these like frictionless. Skates, God. <laughs> They're like skating around, but also their clothes are frictionless in case they trip and fall. And so they can just keep sliding. Yes. And so restaurants restaurants aren't um they're built on like conveyor belts i think we'll say that so there are some restaurants that are within property confines mm -hmm. but the way i was imagining it is basically like (gasps) everything is a miniature highway now so restaurants are now like off ramps and you just like kind of circle around the restaurant until they have your stuff ready and then you can leave because then you haven't stopped moving so imagine that i'm 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 a man who wants to just get tons of rent right Mm -hmm. and so because that's what I do. And so I locate the nearest McDonald's restaurant. Mm-hmm. But they won't sell me the McDonald's restaurant. Mm-mm. So I say, okay, I'm going to buy the other eight plots of land surrounding you. So that every person who accidentally trips going to McDonald's, I get immediately wealthy. Right. So then, you know, this becomes a whole, like, escalation issue where people start, you know, people start finding better ways to get people to fall down. And then people start coming up with better ways to stop people from stopping. Mm-hmm. And I, it, it, obviously this ends up as being basically like an oligarchy kind of thing. Yes. There's, there's the uber elite ultra rich that own most of the land in the country. Mm-hmm. And I do want to talk about also just, we need to, I want to address that there are 
for only four railroads, and they are the coolest only bullet four. train things ever. And people either use railroads oh. or they roller skate. Or they roller skate, yeah. Now, it's, people tried other things like razor scooters and skateboards, and like it just kept coming back to roller skates mm-hmm. because of roller skates have fine control and the ability to do tricks. Now, I do, I do want to specify we're talking roller blades, not for. We are talking roller blades. I have mistakenly said skates. Inline skates. We're mm-hmm. not talking about. We are not talking about. We want those. speed, precision, and low drag. Yeah, I don't want those those crazy, insanely hard to use. I don't understand how people do it. Like two by two wheeled skates with the brake on the front. No, sir. No, I want. I want a land ski. Mm. Okay, so where do the eight tokens fit into this world? We've got a couple ideas here, but we need to nail it down. Yeah. I like what you're going I like the oligarchy angle. Are there are there like eight families yeah. that each have a one of these tokens? As they're like I don't want to have eight main characters in the film. No, though. eight main characters is too many main characters unless it is a um, Avengers of if, if Infinity War. Mm-hmm. But then we need we need a whole universe for each of those individual movies, and that's a lot of work. That it, we, we, never let it be said that we want to do the work to create a shared universe of stories, because that is such an insanely it's, large amount of work, yeah. and that is never something that we've been interested in doing. <clears throat> and we've never done it. And we've never done it, and we never will. That said, I like the crest is idea. Is there a president of this country? Of course not. Everything And by is, president, I mean... I think this is almost King. like a like a it's almost like Rapture from Bioshock where they created this this land where it's okay. like everybody is their own master but then some people do absolutely become the masters because they have the, the most debt. things. So like the debt computer system is the only government. Yes, and so the rich people I like the I like the oligarchy rich people. I do I also I do like the idea of the crests. But I also like the idea of maybe those like eight objects are like artifacts of legend that like grant the wielders excellent buying and selling power, or maybe like oh, I was thinking that the eight tokens would be like they would be what is like keeping the debt system running. Oh, uh, how like magically, magically or magically. <laughs> or maybe it's like okay what about this each <clears throat> family it's not necessarily like a f- each token is actually mm-hmm. like a vast collection of wealth it's like a deed almost and okay. whoever possesses the token their like name or their title legally becomes that token so like the lantern is oh a guy. So, there, well, so there's like there's like mr mr boot yeah and he's not He's, you know, the human being who is Mr. Boot was different 20 years ago, but he's always, Mr. Boot has always been Mr. Boot. Mr. Boot And it's has kind of this one Boot. single lump sum wealth that, like, can't be distributed, but rockets you to the top of the oligarchy. Yeah. And so I, I think an important thing, and this is, this is something we haven't really discussed that I think we need to talk about, is I don't expect for this movie, for the system to be overthrown or broken like this isn't about no the movie is not about the system the movie is about a story that takes place within this system yeah yeah there's not going to be a revolution there's not going to like the tokens aren't going to get destroyed the tokens may p- change hands the tokens the, may yes. be some oh, sort absolutely. of MacGuffin. they're designed to they want to change hands oh the tokens want to change they hands. crave kind of, it time, like kind of an, yeah like the one ring <laughs> okay um all right what other um setting stuff do we need because we we have some characters in mind but i think those fit for our next segment mm-hmm. so we've got we've got the tokens we have the debt system um we've got jail we've got jail we've got jail do we, i don't really think we need to say much about jail it's jail if you cannot pay you go to jail if you, you roll go to what jail. is rolling doubles like in this world what happens there oh we haven't figured out what rolling is in this world well it's I just heard my own sentence, which is what is rolling, and we know that they're all wearing incline skates. Oh, but... yes. <sighs> Do we make it so that they're in? <laughs> no, I don't want to get too weird with it. I was going to say, like, to their inline skates, like, every time they... <laughs> every time they skate, it might randomly stop. It might randomly <laughs> stop. <laughs> <laughs> 
uh, that tickles me, but I, I don't think that'll work in the movie. Yeah, no, I don't. I think we'll just get rid of that. And it's just now like if you happen to stop, Jail. you get yeah. you get taken unless you stop on a property that you own. Mm-hmm. OK. All right. Well, let's jump into our next segment. We call it Who Can It Be? Who can it be? And this is the se- segment where we talk about um, characters and then also who to cast as those characters. But how many... So here's the thing. We talked about the eight tokens, the eight... Ru- mm-hmm. We'll just call them the eight. They're like the, the, the eight, eight, the capital, eight wealthiest people. Capital E. Capital T, capital E. Are all eight present and accounted for? Or is it like... have have Are some of them n- gone? Like... Because so in a real game of Monopoly, if you run out of all your money, you are no longer in the game. Your token gets yeah. removed from the board. So are we down to like five tokens? So I, I like, how about this? So typically only four people will play a game of Monopoly, right? Mm-hmm. So there's four there's four tokens and then that exist and are known. And then there's four that that are uh, gone. And so everybody's so are they gone or have they just never been found? So they, there's always a search to find those yeah. the missing four. I don't know of if they've legend. never been found, but they're lost. Okay, so what are the eight that exist? Or the four, sorry. What are the four that the we four have? That exist? So well let, we can choose um one, two, three, four. So there's eight from the uh there's ten in the original nineteen thirty seven. Well we'll eh. I want. So we've got the iron, the boot, the cannon, the thimble, the race car, the top hat, the battleship, the horse, the purse, and the lantern. Okay, I want lantern. Um, lantern, iron, lantern, iron, race car, and top hat. I think I want. Okay, yeah, race car and top hat. Now you know who's got top hat. That would be uh, the. So I, we're gonna pull the Monopoly guy, right? The, the Monopoly Richard man. Pennybags. Rich Uncle Pennybags. Now. Richard Uncle Pennybags. Is his Pennybags. middle name yeah. Uncle? <laughs> I think his name is Richard Uncle Pennybags. <laughs> it's what we're going to go with. His So we've got we've got Richard quote unquote Uncle Pennybags. Richard Pennybags. Um and, and he's got the top hat. Yeah, and you had a great idea which I really like, which is to pull other ridiculous rich named people from other properties. This is this is not a crossover. But we are stealing these names to. We are going to use these names and not get sued. And not get sued. So because Hasbro's got a lot of money, and if they sign up on this, they're just gonna. So we will be taking Daddy Warbucks from Mm -hmm. Darius, quote unquote, Daddy Warbucks from Annie, and he will be the. We've got Lantern, Iron, and Race Car. Oh, we didn't do Cannon. I thought we did Cannon. We can do Cannon. Cannon instead. Lantern Iron. Yeah, I think he he's should the be war because Warbucks. He's the war machine. Which is yeah. a real weird thing. I just I know that we're not doing Annie, but I want to talk about Annie for just a second. The guy who adopts her, his name is Warbucks because he's a war profiteer. And that was because of how old Annie is. That was written as like, look at how great this guy is making money off of war stuff. It's a weird thing, Frank. The the time is funny. Yeah, time is funny. All right, um, who else we uh, got? So, so then we've got uh, we've got HR Paper Stacks. Who's that from? My, money to the ceiling. Um, and he's gonna be a race car. Race car HR Paper Stacks. What's what's that name from? That name is from uh, the Boondocks cartoon. Oh, nice, nice. Which is very good, but don't watch it uh, with your children, with your children, or your parents, or anyone. That might be offended by anything. And then we've got a personal favorite of mine, Remy Bucks of Plenty from the Fairly Odd Parents. Uh, Remy Bucks of Plenty. And he will be our lantern. So, lantern is the last thing left, but. What did we say Paper Stacks was? The race car? Is this the race car? Now, do you not like lantern for Bucks of Plenty? It's, it works. It works. All right, we'll we'll leave him as the yeah, he's lantern. the lantern. He he lights the way. He's 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 the youngest of them. All right, so to recap, we have Richard Uncle Pennybags is Top Hat. Darius yep. Daddy Warbucks is um is the cannon. Is the cannon. HR Paper Stacks is the is race the car. Race car. Remy Bucks of Plenty is the lantern. Okay. Now, here's an interesting thing. Does the token you have matter? I think it What do you mean? Like if you have the cannon token, do you automatically own a bunch of like war related things? Yes, I think each token does come like representative of the properties that come with it. And mm-hmm. those, so there are, how about this? There's a certain set of properties. What, I'm trying to think of a word that encompasses ev- like all the things you can own items. 
G- g- goods. There's a certain set of goods that come associated with each token, and those goods cannot be bought or sold. The only way those goods can be acquired is if you have the token. And here's the thing: you can acquire the token by any means necessary. Mm-hmm. There's no law. If you're holding the token, all that rent is going to you for as long as you're holding the token. Or maybe there is law, like some kind of battle royale style. I'm, tr- I'm actually so well. Let's get into that right now ish kind of so our main character who is he we talked about this before the show he's gonna be like a private detective Mm -hmm. and he's gonna solve a mystery and is the mystery a murder i don't want the mystery to it may be someone's dead but i want i I want this to have a national treasure vibe yeah here's what i'm a dan brown vibe of like chasing this crazy trail can i tell you what i think here's what i think happened Mm -hmm. there is a murder but it's just like a nobody and everyone's like what but there's like weird circumstances so our our detective gets called and we're getting a little bit into plot i don't want to touch it too much but here's what what will reveal well i'm going to save this for the plot segment I have a very good nug. Yeah, yeah. This this sounds pretty meaty. This is meaty. So let's let's talk about our let's talk about our D our PI. Now, is his name gonna be Dick? His name could be Dick. Is he? he so we, we have four rich people names, right? Mm-hmm. Is he a poor? Does name? he have a poor people name or a rich people name? Or does he just have like is everybody's name so on the nose like? Well, and here's another. So we established that owning a token, like your title becomes that token. But like, does whoever owned the cannon become Daddy Warbucks or they just become the cannon? I think that it's a it's a name. It's a it's 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 closer to a title. Yeah. So so Daddy Warbucks is his name. But Daddy Warbucks is the cannon. Daddy Warbucks is the cannon. So I could be Scott Owen, the cannon, but I wouldn't be Scott Owen, the Daddy Warbucks. No, the Richard uncle. Yeah. Yeah. It's more. It's like your title. Okay. His name could be Dick because he is a detective, and that is very detective. clever, That's and it's good. like a wink. And we could do, and now this, you know, are we going R? Are we going PG-13? His name could be, like, Dick Hunter, because that's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, we're 12 years old. Um, <laughs> no, but he's not. <laughs> I think his name is, like, Dick Penny. I dare you to think of something that's not. Penny Saver? <laughs> Dick Penny Saver. Or Dick, like, um, Scrounger, like, mm. Dick Scrounger. <laughs> <laughs> maybe his name's not Dick. Really... Or maybe it is Dick, and we call him Dick Finder. Dick. Yeah. Dick Detective. Penny Saver's nice, because they all have money themes. Yeah, Penny Saver. And I then, was like, the say... rich people don't respect him, because it's not a rich person name. Yeah, it's very clearly like you save your pennies. What's it's a like, penny? Oh, oh lord! What even is that? Because there's not, there's not, there's not currency. Oh yeah, the world has been like this. So I think originally there was currency, but the, you know this. Oh, it's yeah. been thousands of years. They've everything's digital now. Of course. Yeah. Okay. Money stopped existing when trees stopped existing. Money. Oh, there's no trees. Well, there's trees. We're not going that weird. I yeah, think. there's trees, but everything there. Yeah, you can't stop next to them. Otherwise. You gotta pay. The other way. Um, okay. That's so, the sound. That's the sound when all your money goes away. So, <laughs> what if do we go like classic noir with this bit? Are we gonna do? We just want to hit all the tropes. Yeah, that works. Because it's I want to do too. Like because of Richard Penny, Pennybags and his signature style, mm-hmm. I want to do like it's the year twenty six hundred, but everyone is dressing like it's nineteen twenty again. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yes, 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 yes. Everybody dresses like the Monopoly people. Yeah. If we're going with the trope of film noir, we can just we can just fill all the character archetypes. And so you've got the femme fatale, of course. <gasps> yes. I have an idea, mm-hmm. and it's a little. Let, just let me know how you feel about it. Mm-hmm. So currently, our four token holders are old men, mm-hmm. and so what if this gets wrapped up into one? So the the fifth token is found by a woman. Oh, and there are claims to its legitimacy, for which Dick Penny Saver is called in to investigate. Yeah, I actually, so this is kind of close to what I wanted to bring up, but I want to save it for our plot segment because I think we've, I think this is going to get meaty. 
So let's just talk about. So we're gonna have a woman, and she's gonna be a club singer or something. Mm-hmm. Because they always are. Who comes by? Who comes into possession of a token by undefined means? Now, I will say, I do want us to. I do. I want her to be a character. Like, I don't want her yeah, to be. Yeah, the, yeah. I don't want her to be the the usual. Like, I'm only here to be a lady who looks nice, and then I will fall in love with the. No, detective. no. She she will. She viciously has. She has plans for this token. She's gonna and she's gonna participate in this plot. Yeah. Well. Okay. Oh, yeah. So that we're gonna have. The 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 private detective he's gonna be an alcoholic, big time, big time alcoholic, and that's why that's why his name is Penny Saver is because every time he gets two pennies he goes and he goes and buys the devil's liquor. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, and then he's gonna have like an informant friend maybe who's like he's gonna have you know he's got seedy friends he's gonna have that one mm-hmm. friend who's like kind of helping him he out but also guy. but also kind of shady yeah. That guy will be the he'll be the deadpan snarker from this list of film noir archetype tropes. He's gonna be snarky. His name's gonna be Snarky. Snarky. Yeah, they'll just call Dale him snarky. snarky. Dale Snarky. Okay. Um Dale Snarky. Snarky is his nickname, Snarkson. Yep. Okay, let's we've got our six. Let's stick with just those six characters for now. Let's talk casting. Who do you want? Who are we thinking for Dick Penny Saver? Can I make a suggestion? You can. I I have seen this person do noir before, albeit he did it as a teenager, but I think he could nail it down. I'm thinking Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Oh, hell yes. I don't know if you've seen the movie Brick, but it is a modern-day high school movie that is also a film noir every like all the kids talk like they're in a film noir there's a mystery oh, it's like really that, good like like that macbeth with guns movie y- yeah but it was it's better than that but good instead of yeah it's really good he's like instead of like oh. a disgraced cop he's like a former hall monitor and he like sometimes like the principal is like the police chief who brings him in and he talks about how like he he helps the office and stuff it's really great it's a very very good movie so i'm That's thinking good. we get joseph gordon levitt who should we get for the mysterious woman? The femme That's fatale. Tougher. That's tougher. We could get... We already... Did we cast Gal Gadot in something recently? We talked about her. I think... She wasn't in Golden Girls. Was she before no. that? What did we do before Golden Girls? I don't remember. I don't remember what we do. I don't remember what we do either. Uh, we can do that. Gal Gadot. I think she could be great. She, oh, I think that could be good. I could buy that. Yeah, she's got the she's got the hair for it for sure. So now I think now we'll talk about. Let's talk the big about four the is going to be interesting. The big four. Hit me with your Richard Uncle Pennybags. With Richard Uncle Pennybags. See, this is if Wilfred Brimley acted, then Ooh, he will I mean, have that know. mustache and monocle for sure. Now, Wilfred yeah. Brimley is he still with us? I don't know if the beat is got him or because not. you know he was an actor. Yo, he was an actor. Yeah, what do you think he was? I don't know. I thought he was just an old guy, like a professional old man. He is still alive. I think we can get Wilford Brimley. He's in we the original Wilford. 1982, The Thing. Yeah, that's ex- the exact reason why I want him. Yeah, let's get Wilford Brimley for yeah. Richard Uncle Pennybags. So, um, for for Daddy Warbucks, so there was the reboot with Jamie Fox, mm-hmm. and I liked. I like the way that went, but I think I want to sub Jamie Foxx for um, Mayor Shala Ali from Luke Cage. Oh, yes. Mahar- he would yeah. be good. Is that... that? Yes. That'd be... Re- oh. I'm, like, mad that this isn't going to be real, though, because he was good in Luke Cage. Yeah, that's... He's good in Luke Cage. He's good in um, House of Cards. Oh, yeah. So, uh... Remy Bucks of Plenty is a, he's kind of our, he's our young one, right? He's like our arrogant mid-twenties Remy Bucks of Plenty. Bucks of Plenty. Yeah, let's get, um, So, I want someone, I want someone whose face I kind of want to punch, but yeah. that's also the reason why I'm picking him. I have something for you here. Mm-hmm. Jesse Eisenberg. Oh, that's perfect, because I just want to clock him. He was it. an insufferable Mark Zuckerberg, and he was an insufferable yeah. millennial startup Lex Luthor. I have to, I have to, yeah, I, I want to rephrase, because I... I like Jesse Eisenberg. I want to just deck him, but that's what he's doing on yes, purpose. Yes, exactly. I, I have to say, like, I, I hated him. He's good at But it. he was doing, like, that's what he was going for. And so I think we yeah. get him for that. 
And then last is HR paper stacks. And maybe we get, you know who I'd like to see more of? Yeah. Michael B. Jordan. He's yeah. also young. but Oh, he's hot. He's hot right now. He's hot right now. So two young guys, two, well, three, two three youngest guys. guys, one old man. Yeah, yeah. And rich Uncle Pennybags is like, yeah, he, he can be the oldest one who's been around the longest. He's done the worst things yeah. because he's been able to hold his token for the longest. Oh, yeah. And, um, okay. He's kind of the king of the hill right now. Yes. With the top hat. Okay. All right. So that's going to do it. That We've got our cast. We've got our characters. Let's get into our final segment. We're call, It's called What's Going On? And this is where we talk about the plot. We're going to outline the story, what's happening, why this is happening. So we've talked about a token gets found. Here's what I was thinking. I think I think there's been a murder, and the murder seems like inconsequential. And maybe the mm-hmm. murder is like, I don't know, related to the woman, and that's how he meets the mysterious woman. There's... But here's like like the murder happens at a place. Well, and I think and then, I think it's someone she knows because she gets she's a witness. He goes to like or a, not a witness, but just someone oh. he has to go talk to because she it's someone close to her. And here's what I'm thinking: I, I you touched on it with a token has been discovered. I want it to be that a token has been discovered, but it's not public knowledge. Like nobody's aware of that. So it's like halfway through he finds out this murder happened because this person found the token they found the silver boot it's like it's like wrapped in a handkerchief so that no one touches it and triggers the computer to actually register it to them well i think maybe the does the computer register to the person's yeah i guess that would work can we make it so that the like can anyone access the computer and like see who the token holders are if Yes, if we can. Yes, if that doesn't hurt us. Here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking that that is not something that's publicly applicable. It's just the token okay. holders always eventually like publicly announce themselves. And mm. so the token gets found. The big four have enough money that they can get notified like and they can maybe they can see like the transfers happening. So they suddenly see a insane amount of goods transfer into someone's name and they realize a and token has been from- found nowhere that from nowhere means it's a token right they so they realize a token's been found whether or not and so that's the thing our detective will find out that they get to they can see that and so then instantly all four of them become suspects i think that if any of them are involved it will only be one of them like all yeah. four of them are not good guys and they like they'll try to like pay him to you know serve their interests and whatever but i think if any of them is actually involved in this murder it's only one of them but here's what i'm thinking I think the mysterious woman did the murder. Okay. The the token got found. She took it from them, but she, like you said, I like this idea. She has not made, she's got it like kept wrapped up somewhere and hasn't touched it yet because she wants the murder to like blow over. Yeah. yeah and then yeah. she'll claim the token. So the token is still like associated with the dead person. Yeah. So he, the detective knows someone yes. has the token. Yes. They haven't claimed it. Because they murdered this, is it like, who got murdered? Her, like, best friend, her sister, her brother, her husband? <sighs> Business partner? Business partner. Maybe, like, her uh, her backup singer? Okay. I like that. It's like, that way she, like, when she gets investigated, she can be like, no, Jenny was, me and Jenny was, I loved her. She was the best singer we had. I was. Yeah. She never stole focus, which is exactly what you need in the backup. She never stole focus, but she had a dream and I was happy to help her get on the road to that dream. Like she comes across as like, she had nothing against Jenny, but then Jenny found a token and Jenny was going to leave and, and surpass her. And so she kills Jenny hides the token sets off a chain of events chain of events a whole chain of events the detective will get the shit beat out of him multiple times multiple times because that is what happens in a film noir snarky will give him info that turns out to be bad snarky will give him info that turns out to be good too but snarky will sell him out at one point oh yeah directly to richard pennybags directly to richard Richard pennybags so i want to get i think i want of the four rich men i think i want uh i think i want richard to be the one who's crooked because he's like the old school old money like yes i actually kill a guy i want to be clear i think all four of them are crooked i think richard 
penny bags is the worst, most crooked of all of them. He will do whatever yeah, yeah. it takes. He's the one who is specifically entangled in this plot. Yes. I think, so I think he does, I think maybe Dick gets approached by HR paper stacks and like, or wait, who did we say was Maharaja uh, Ali, Mahershala? That was Daddy Warbucks. I want him to like, I want as many scenes with him as possible just because I could, I love hearing his voice. Oh yeah. I want him to like try to hire the detective to like, you find that token, you let me yeah. know first, and I will. And so yeah. he's kind of like it's, you think you want to take that token, but you you don't you, you don't have the education, you don't know how to handle what's going to come your way, and you're going to end up poor again. But if you give me the token, what about this? I'll make it worth your while. What if so? What if he gets hired by he doesn't know who hired him. He just gets hired mm-hmm. to solve this murder, and then eventually, like he ends up talking to he finds out that. Um, Warbucks hired him, and then that's when he finds out it was a token, because Warbucks is like, it was a token. Yes, I need you to retrieve a stolen item from me, but he doesn't say it's a token. Well, all, so all he knows is that it was, he's been hired to solve a murder, and then as he finds out, like, what's going on, like, he's like, someone paid me a lot of money, it has to be someone who's really high up, what does this murder mean? And then as he starts getting close, then Warbucks is like, alright, I gotta meet with him, and, like, I gotta bring him in. Yeah. So then he's like, I'm the one who hired you, and he's like, why the hell would you hire me? Maybe Warbucks does try to keep it under wraps a little bit. He just tells him like he's inter- it's an it's of his interest that this murder gets solved and then he finds out it's a token and he's like what the hell Warbucks you lied to me and Warbucks is like yeah that's that's monopoly. That's monopoly. A- end of the movie. Just kicks him in the nuts. And then we do find out that Uncle Pennybags is working with the mysterious woman. Oh, because and here's the thing. Maybe it's like he it's in his interest for whatever reason for there to be an odd number of token holders because an even number like they none of them can like effectively gain power i don't know he's he's got a he's gonna have a reason why he wants a fifth token yeah yeah he wants a he wants a second token holder to make power moves on yeah he he, he's manipulating the mysterious woman i think but then it turns out she's manipulating him and she and then all five of them are each manipulating the person to their left yeah so then the mystery will get solved, but nothing will, like, it'll be unsatisfying. Like, she'll mm-hmm. end up getting, she'll basically get away with it, because she'll, maybe he'll, like, how about this? He does solve the crime, but then he realizes, like, oh, I, it was the wrong person who got, um, who had got pinned on, but that person, like, got shot and killed or something, so there's nothing he can do about it. Like, he, and so he goes to her, and he, like, basically reveals, like, I know you did it, and she's like... Yep, and I'm the boot now. Like, what are you gonna do? So what? Yeah, and so then it's it's like a it's like a Chinatown moment where you're like, forget it, man. It's just Monopoly. It's just Monopoly. And then he goes home and drinks. And then he he drinks and he and done 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 done. He reaches into his pocket and he pulls out a handkerchief and he unwraps it and it's the boot. What? He, he stole it too. <laughs> so now he's the boot. Now he's the boot. Interesting. That's not necessarily the twist ending that I wanted. Cut to black. That's Monopoly. That's Monopoly. He looks right at the camera and he says, that's Monopoly. Boom. Mm-hmm. Credits. Yeah, okay. Who's the bank now? What other lines What other lines we got? Do not pass go. Oh, we didn't even Do talk about jail. Go. He's going to have to go visit someone in jail. Yeah, yeah. And then he has to, um, uh, every single time he walks, every single time there's a shot of him walking down the street, somewhere in the background is a sign that has the word go on it, like in different locations. Yeah, and like different styles. It's I just want like an Easter egg. Here's the thing about so what's he's the, constantly passing go. What if going to jail is like you don't actually go to jail? Like it's not a physical place. It's just when you go to jail, all it means is you don't get to collect rent or anytime anybody lands. So like it's it is you're basically just like disgraced while you're in jail, and people are just like. And then when you're wearing the AR goggles, you're wearing like the pinstripe prison outfit yeah but so like he'll he'll go talk to a guy who's in jail but he's just like goes to his house yeah he just meets him uh, he just meets him at a hot dog yeah but the language is like man how's it feel to know that um there's just people sitting on your property um Mm -hmm. yeah i like oh because then when someone's in jail and it gets out like people throw house parties because it's free Mm -hmm. oh well, once they get That's out of jail, monopoly. once they get out of jail, they can instantly start collecting on anyone who's still on yeah, the property. Yeah, so it's like an adrenaline junkie game. Yeah, they're like, "Oh man, he's he's coming out," and then they gotta jump off the property. Yes, I like all yeah. that. Also, That's monopoly. Yeah, and he, 
just to further set this image in everyone's mind, we do need to remind you that everyone roller skates, so this private eye is is rollerblading everyone around everywhere. Everyone is roller skating all the time. <laughs> this 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 movie is going to be like mostly like dolly tracking yeah shots. it's gonna be kind of amazing Every, like conversations instead of standing still in a room they're gonna be like very slowly going in a circle yeah it's like the raddest aaron sorkin yeah. thing you've ever seen yeah we're actually just gonna go ahead and get aaron sorkin yeah i, I think, think he'd too. love to direct this i think sorkin would love to direct this monopoly movie i think that'd be really slick all right well, we're coming up on uh, almost an hour so we should wrap that up there thank you everybody for listening we hope you enjoyed the show. If you like it, please give us a good rating and review on iTunes. That helps us out a ton. And if you know anyone who you think might like the show, please tell them about it. We don't advertise at all, so sharing this however you can would help us a lot. Until next time, I'm Scott Owen. I'm Frank Sarah. And Frank, what's our password for next week? Oh, what will it be? You know what? That's Monopoly. Monopoly. Uh-huh.